Welcome, everybody. We got another episode out on our Savvy Investor YouTube channel. Uh, for those that are brand spanking new to YouTube or to our YouTube channel, welcome to Savvy Investor. Um, as you're jumping on, make sure you give us a quick hello. Let us know who's here, where you're dialing from. Uh, and for those that don't know who I am, I'm the founder of Savvy Investor and longtime Canadian real estate investor as well. So again, it's another YouTube live channel, uh, live training session. And for many people that have been following us along, we do have regularly, uh, we have regular topics and guests joining us to share about all sorts of things, talking about real estate investing, of course. And we have another amazing training session today, and it's about a really popular topic, and it's about Airbnbs and short-term rentals and getting started with this investment strategy. Um, and this is definitely an investment strategy that is opening up a lot of eyes. Uh, specifically when it comes to interest rates. I don't know if anybody else is noticing, but interest rates are going up. Um, and for probably a lot of us, it's also impacting our cash flow. I know for my pockets, they're feeling a little bit lighter these days. I'm not sure if anybody else is feeling the same way. Um, but for me, I'm definitely noticing that. So um, the conversations that I've been having and talking to a lot of people is, is this a strategy that I may want to implement? And a lot of people are looking at this as, should I be converting my long-term rentals into maybe short-term rentals? And, and is this the solution to maybe overcome the challenge of maybe not as much cash flow? And so that is what we're going to be learning today and learning more about for today. So uh, for those of you that have maybe traveled over the last summer, over the last year, you may have noticed um, or you may have stayed at an Airbnb or a VRBO or some form of short-term rental. And uh, you kind of had that experience. And as investors, like myself, I did the same thing. I traveled. I was out in Portugal for uh, the latter part, most part of August. It was fantastic. Had a great trip. Um, and we did. We rented a lot of short-term rentals, a lot of Airbnbs. And as an investor, I am looking at my calculator and I'm like, hmm, wait a minute here. How much would I be making every single month? I go, you know, the light bulb kind of comes on here and this is like, hello, maybe this is something that I should be kind of looking at. So if this is sounding like you, you guys are considering like, you know, maybe I want to go into the short term rental space. I see this as an opportunity and an investment strategy, but I think just like any other strategy, you need to take the time to learn. So if, for this, if this is something that you've been considering, or wanting to learn more about, you are in the right place today. Um, so we brought in an up and coming short term rental investor, in my opinion, who has been absolutely killing it. He won't say that because he's so modest. But at the end of the day, uh, he's got several years of experience in this strategy and he is going to be sharing a wealth of knowledge with us savvy investors. So I'm very, very fortunate to have our good friend, Mr. Mark Hernandez, joining us from Vancouver Island, beautiful Vancouver Island. Uh, and he's really going to be sharing a lot of his wisdom on this subject. And so for those that don't necessarily know who Mark is, um, he is a regular poster on our Facebook group. Um, and like I said, you got to love some of the jokes that he's also referencing. It's always great to have him on here. But Mark is a seasoned investor, uh, seasoned investor, roughly seven years investing in this particular strategy, converting more single family properties and now in multifamily properties in the short term rental space. And as I referenced earlier about Mark, you know, he is an up and comer. He's becoming a lot more recognized out in the community um, and as an expert in this space. And, it is, and is absolutely on top of all aspects of this particular business. So much so that he's even been recognized by Airbnb directly and has made him one of the host leaders of Vancouver Island to help others that are needing support in the short-term rent, short rental space. So with that being said, you know, he, he's one of these guys, he's actually been quite successful. And it, this strategy has actually helped him retire from being a registered nurse with Island Health, uh, which many of us investors have a common goal like this. We want to leave our J-O-B. So it'll be get, good to learn a little bit more about that as well as how he was able to accomplish this. So again, Mark's an amazing guy and so happy to have him join us today. Um, so before I bring him on, I just wanted to do a friendly reminder here is if you haven't had the opportunity uh, to do so yet, um, just make sure you, I can see your comments. So make sure you can post your questions, share some of your comments on the chat. Um, and I'll make sure that we do our part to uh, get those questions answered for you. And to help kind of get the keyboard rolling and making sure that to get some of that practice, if you haven't had that opportunity yet, 
please do me a small little favor. Take a moment to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you don't mind. Uh, we are trying to grow our channel and you know hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. We greatly appreciate this as it helps with the algorithms and supports our community as well. So without further ado, let's introduce our guest speaker, Mr. Mark Hernandez. Mr. Mark Hernandez, how are you doing, sir? I got to unmute you first. You know. Oh, okay. Great. Yes, I, I'm fantastic. Thanks, Michael. Hey, team. Hey, Savvy Investor team. Mark here. <laughs> Great. So, you know, Mark, for a lot of people, they don't necessarily know who you are. So, you know, I did kind of give you a brief, uh, brief introduction. So maybe if you wouldn't mind, just tell people who you are, what you do, a little bit about your your story. OK. OK. Well, how can I pass that really great introduction? Thank you. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> um, OK. Again, guys, my name is Mark. I am from Vancouver Island. As what Michael said, uh, my background is I'm a registered nurse and I'm a traveling registered nurse. And I guess that's my um, unfair advantage because as a travel nurse, we travel across the country, um, even with U.S. and Caribbean. And then for me, as a real estate investor, uh, we need a place to stay. And as an investor, I don't want renting. You know, it's either I pay my lender or I pay myself. Which one would you prefer? You know, I'd rather pay myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I started with one. Uh, in, and that's my... Well, my first one actually was a long-term rent. So I, in Winnipeg, actually, that's my long-term rent. But introduction to Airbnb is when I get assigned into Fino. If you guys are not familiar, to Fino is the surfing capital in Canada. It's a wedding destination. It's a vacation destination. So it's a, it's a short-term rental, very friendly um, area. And then um, initially, my purpose was to to live there because this is such a nice place. And having a piece mm -hmm. of paradise wherein you can go whenever you want to or a break from work then um that would be it you have a slice of paradise but then that being said the the only property that's available is an airbnb so or a or a bnb or a short-term rental so these are snowbirds trying to dispose the asset and they're like you know we're tired we want to move to california here you go you can take the yeah. bookings you can take the uh, furnishing as well and take it as it is so initially, I didn't know because it's not your traditional um, sale. You have to have GST. You have to have um, the booking. So it's a little complicated than your traditional. But so I just continued as it is. And little did I know, it's making double or triple the long-term rent. And mm. um, yeah, you the good thing is you can turn it on and off. Like if you want to use it, you can turn it off and then use it to your, you know, it's very flexible in that case. And then since I travel a lot and then if I don't use the space, you turn it on and you make money. Perfect. Right. Um, and then I just continue with what I'm doing. And um, but then it needs property manage manager. So I I asked my manager at that time at work and she's like, I know a guy. Uh, and then we went for coffee, handshake. And that's a property manager, you know, set it and forget it somebody managing it, you can continue your job. So it's a good model we're in because they think that it's a full time, but having it's a who, not how, having someone to manage it and then you continue your job, adding additional income. Uh, so you get your earned income and then you get another, uh, another stream of income, increase your qualification, and then you do the Burr method. So I do the Burr plus SDR. So I, I, it's not familiar with everyone because it's Burr and long-term rent. But so Burr, additional SDR, I call it Burr on steroids because you triple it. And the beauty of that market as well, because I, I, I want to reference that for everyone who, um, who want to know about it is because, uh, so I bought it 350 for a two-bedroom condo and in five years, it became 1.3. So I made my first million in that, well, having cash flow. So it's like a slam dunk. So like, okay, you know, it's really great. So, and then just repeat it, you know, uh, so from that 1 million, you can buy five more and then scale up, scale your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, yeah. So traveling nurse did a Burr SDR, started with one, and then you scale up your portfolio. Love it. Love it. And I think that there's a lot of lots unpacked there because as you guys hear is he's still doing the Burr strategy increasing the value. And then at the same time, he is able to rent it at a premium rent. And if he wants to go to Tofino, go surfing, 
he can just go ahead and do so. And I was going to say, you know, during all the time, everybody's struggling trying to find places to go on holidays. Mark's not necessarily having that same issue because he can just go stay in one of his Airbnbs. And that's just fantastic. That's great. So, you know, I think for, you know, Mark, you know, and I think you already answered this question is you, um, you know, th there's a lot of real estate investors that are listening and watching this right now. And there are thousands of different ways to skin a cat, as you referenced, or different investment strategies that you can you can do. You can do fix and flip, rent to own, but you chose short-term rental Airbnb strategy. What would be what would be the main reason why you chose that versus any other strategy that's out there? Um hmm. I think it chose me because <laughs> it doesn't, oh, you know, okay. for me. <laughs> hmm. um, well, for me, I guess, because be, that's being my first and knowing that it is a really great model, I just continued it and I really didn't think much of other. And um, yeah. so following to that, no, people knowing, because I give it like to my friends, like, hey, guys, if you need a place or cabin in Tofino, give me a shout. I have a cabin there. And just like that, you know, really didn't think much of it because I, I still love my job and I went, you know, doing full time. Yeah. Um, comes pandemic where people kind of slow down and, you yeah. know, everyone is affected. This is where you're like, okay, what am I doing with my life? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like which direction I'm moving forward. At the same time, after you reach a certain number of single family home, uh, you hit the wall with lending. Yeah. The bank will be like, okay, that's it. You know? Um, okay. So that a lot of thinking goes through it. Um, and then for me, well, for one, it's cash flowing. Yeah. Two, it's very passive. I'm not doing anything because of property management. Okay. And three, it's like it's like slum dunk, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, what makes it for me? Um, well, the other, I think I'll continue the story. Um, so when I work here in Vancouver Island, because I work in emergency, lots of I know there's a need, and I guess that's my unfair uh advantage because uh traveling medical professional, they know like hey Mark, we know you have an Airbnb in Tofino. Do you have one in the area? These are like doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals. Like, you know what? Maybe I can start my own. And, you know, and I think the best way to find out is to give it a try. Um, and then if worst case scenario, plan B or exit strategy, I can rent it long term. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then I like designing things, you know. So for whoever is um, Pinterest fan there, I'm part of it. Like, because it's <laughs> you just copy it. I love, I love designing the space. And for me, it, it's like... Uh, the way I look at it, it's evolving that space like Pokemon. Love it. Love uh, it. Yeah. So I started with one single family home, a condo near the hospital because I know location, location, location is yes. big. The, it's yes. proximity to your market, which is the hospital, transforming it one bedroom condo. And the doctors love it. It's like, okay, can I book it next month? Can I book? They love the privacy. They just love, you know, they can, they don't have to drive. Um, and then, one thing leads to another. I can do another one and another one to the point that I was like, okay, I told my realtor, okay, I need two more. So we do like the, the paper inserted under the door of every building. <laughs> it's like, okay, are you thinking of buying a place? Because, you know, in the other, on the other end of um, the short-term rental space or the mid-term rental is that the licensing. So mm. if you find a building that they're okay, they're chill, they're, you know, um, they're happy with with that, then you marry that building because usually nine out of 10, they don't want. Uh, right. Where I'm staying right now, I tried to do it. Like, okay, let me try my primary residence because I'm always right. away anyway. And I get slapped in the hand. No, you can't do that. The insurance will go up or the, it's a threat to the security of the building. Um, so if you find uh, a building that's okay with it, then yes, uh, you, you marry that building. Love it. Love it. So, you know what, just like any other strategy, and I guess this is, this is one of the things there's, there's a lot of investors here listening to this and they're like, okay, you know what, my cash flow is not doing so well with my long-term rentals. And, and I have been hearing a lot of this whole short-term rental space. And this could be an opportunity to recoup um, some of that lost cash flow and maybe converting some of these single families to a short-term rental space. Um, so, but just like any strategy, there's pros and cons to it as well. So maybe, would you mind just sharing, I guess, maybe just a few of the pros and a couple of the cons in regards to what those, uh, what what's good and bad about this strategy? Okay. Uh, let's do, I guess, with a con first based on my experience um, and also with some people. Um, I guess, same with BC and other provinces, except Alberta, the pain of dealing with the residential tenancy board. 
Mm. It's very tenant centric. So I guess people can resonate to that. That it's it's really a struggle to to deal with them. It, it's hard to evict uh, uh, a tenant. So that one, because in short term rental space, they're just there for quite a while and then they will leave. Let you know. Leave. Yeah. Um, the other one is the wear and tear. So in my experience, they're most of like the doctors, nurses that stay, they just they work, we work 12 and 16 hours. I know. We'll just we just need a place to crash. Mm-hmm. And these are professional tenants. These are your A plus tenant profile. Right, right. You know, and they are happy to pay premium. So, you know, so that part. Um uh what are the other cons? Uh I guess the big thing is it's the licensing. Uh, with bad publicity, Airbnb and other short-term rally uh, and municipality, hotel industry pushing like, okay, you know, short-term, you can't do short-term rental and things like that. So that is the biggest thing. But mm-hmm. um, there, I found a spot between short-term rental, long-term rental, which is the mid-term rental. So here in Nanaimo, they, defer, um, they define the short-term rental as 30 days or below. And more right. than 30 days, it's considered long-term. So they're in. Mm-hmm. But then there is the mid-term space. So right. two to three months. So I call them, hey, uh, I serve the clients that are, you know, in the medical community. We do two to three months. Oh, as long as it's less than uh, more than 30 days, you don't have to deal with it. So, okay, we don't have to deal with the licensing. So that's one, midterm rental. Um, on the flip side, like Tofino one is a very, very short-term rental uh, yeah. friendly because they know that tourism brings a lot of revenue. So there's a socioeconomic impact. And there's a space for short-term rental, so they you just need to do licensing. So in one space, if it's regulated, it weeds out the illegal operator, and there is the kind of like accountability because at the end of the day, I think it's responsible hosting. So because it's right. very complaint-driven, all the parkings will be um, allocated only for the certain guests, things like that. Which okay, you know, um, yeah. So licensing is another. If the city like Vancouver, Montreal, Calgary, the bigger cities. They are not uh, pro short term rental, so that's a biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. If your business yeah. is relying on that one one risk move or politics, then it shuts down. Yeah. Um. But for me, coming from the medical background, there is the corporate rental side of things and midterm rental, and also, actually, uh, the the province called me about it. Uh, one of the, um, the guy from the BC Ministry of Economic Development and Disaster Management tell me like, hey, I want to pick your story because you have an impact you're bringing essential services especially in a smaller right. community that they don't have that like teachers nurses and they need a place to say that's part of recruitment retention so can i have you speak in the summit next year I was like absolutely i would love to i, I i'm helping the community that uh, the medical community at the same time uh having them because aware we get that there is a, a positive impact of it um in a challenging world where affordability and housing because that's another thing they think that oh you're taking away the supply or you know yeah. the, and you're the reason um why there is rentability issue in yeah. the city you know um so that's con, con positive um i guess on top of what i said um you're not just in the real estate business you know i in my in my video i said from hospital to hospitality and me as a people person, I work with people. I, I love that. You put that experience in there. You can have like, um, what? let's say it's so many. One of like, let's say one of the few stories that I have is I have a family during pandemic that they need to isolate. So they yeah. want to spend Christmas, but because, yeah, they create like, hey, we usually get together. Uh, this is a family from, uh, from Paris. They said they want to um, celebrate together, but since... Mm-hmm. Um, they, they they need to declare that they have a a, a, a private that they space that they're not uh, for for isolation you know so they use right. they book my Airbnb and they celebrate their Christmas together so I put that welcome Love to it. Canada and a little card put like a personal touch to it so and which in a way it differentiates you from the hotel because they block so you put the human experience to it and you make it extra special to them and they love it they they they, they give me a card and we still like um we. We, we, we letter, you know, we still communicate via letter like, hey, Mark, we want to um, uh, just want to let you know that we really appreciate the small things. And that makes a little a big difference. And they, they want to come back, you know, so like you've made that that experience very personable for them. Um, yeah, yeah I think that's the key is like the business is a little bit different, like than your 
conventional, you know, buy and hold and, and, and more importantly, just long-term rentals. You know, in a lot of cases, that's even my business as well. It's just, you know, for me, I buy a property, I rent it out and that's what I do. That's it. But I think you made a really good comment and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but it is different. There are two different businesses in a lot of ways is one is you're kind of in the rental business. The other one, you're actually kind of in the hospitality business. And so maybe you can kind of share a little bit about the differences between that. Like as being in the, you're, you're technically in the hospitality side of the business. Exactly. Like you said, you're creating experiences. Um, so maybe, can you maybe share a little bit about what kind of the responsibility is? So like, let's just say, Mark, you know what? I'm about to get into a short-term rental. And now I'm going to be in the hospitality business, but I've had a lot of long-term tenants. What, what are some of the responsibilities that I would have to, or what are some of the responsibilities I do need to understand as part of that business? Okay. Uh, well, I guess it's like, okay, um, do you want to be an active uh, hospitality operator yes. or do you want to delegate that like you see with mm -hmm. my previous one because i still i still love my job i don't have time but i want to continue that one so you hire it's who not how you hire someone and then your problem is solved you know your only job is to collect rent and look at the cash flow but if you want and you enjoy that um which i am right now um then you you have to communicate with a guest and then the other thing is you have quicker turnovers um so that entails housekeeping. Yeah. So um, another beauty of being near the hospital is that you get access to great housekeeping. So um, being, I, I guess I'll add it to my unfair advantage is I know which ho ho housekeeping does good and, you know, their work ethics. So I talked to them and said, hey, do you want a side gig? Um, and they said, Okay, let me let, tell me about it. And it's like, okay, I have this uh, furnished apartments that uh, the doctors and nurses stay, and I would need to clean them whenever there's uh, back to back guests. Um, in return, because Airbnb and short term rentals are it's all about uh, reviews. So if you like get four stars or if your cleanliness is bad, it, it's very guest centric, um, then you get low. Um, boosting or algorithm so right. so this i said okay manage the expectation okay i just need like five stars i don't know how you want it i know there are other ways of cleaning <laughs> I, I will not be mic micromanaging you i know how you work and it does that i just need five star review guess is okay um and then we'll be good and i'll double what you're getting in the hospital you know because i want you in a certain time usually same with like the hotel like i need right. you like 11 a.m to 3 and then if I want you, if there's like a bu busy season, especially like summer or like a back to back, then um, then yes, I I know you have other commitments, but I, I want you to to give that up and then you, this makes your priority. And that's OK. Yeah. Um, yes. And then one thing that leads to like, OK, and now I hired seven of them. So you're creating jobs. And then I like that aspect, too. And then at the same time, they're happy. Um, my guests are happy. I've never had. Um, less than five so that makes me a super host at the same time you know oh we have actually last month we i took them out because i we do we do costco uh inventory and then i took them out for like you know you, you build that relation at the same time they say you know because of this um i was able to send my 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 kids to school i have extra money so it really helps so there's that impact um and i like that you know yeah. Um, maybe the hospital will hate me for get for taking them away, but <laughs> this, <laughs> at the same wow. time, too, during pandemic, there is that um because Airbnb cut the standard of infection control. Um, but for me, it's like, don't worry, my housekeepers are trained very well. I don't mm -hmm. need to train them, but they're you know, so that gives so me my funny. listing boosting. So that's it works. cool. Yeah, and I think now all of a sudden every hospital, everybody, every hospital maintenance people are gonna get. Their doors knocked on. Anyway, good advice. That's fantastic. So, you know, I think you've highlighted a few a few times and, and you're in a very fortunate position is, you know, here you are on Vancouver Island um, and you've got a, a great destination. You know, it's a huge tourist destination. Um, and, you know, you know, you're very fortunate to have to be investing in kind of that market. But you have also investors watching this live and even, across, you know, watching the recording and they are literally all over the country. And they're maybe all over North America. And some of their markets, let's just say, are not as touristy as they would be in Victoria. 
So I wanted to ask you, you know, when, for those that are looking to get started, how, how do you kind of choose a location when it comes to short-term rentals and maybe what are some better locations than others, you know, so maybe you can just elaborate on, you know, as individuals that are getting started, what, what are some of the best locations to be looking for? And, and even in some cases, maybe even avoid. Okay. Good point. Um, well, you know, initially, as you guys can tell from my story, my target, I call it guest avatar. My target avatar is the medical people, like, right? because that's where my background is. But so I know during, I've been doing it since 2015, I got approached by insurance people, you know, which is a thing in the state. There are some short-term rental that is only for insurance that deals with them. Um, flooded condo, they need two to three months of furnished accommodation to uh, for, while they're, they're fixing their house. Um, yeah. Provincial uh, natural disaster relocation. There's forest fire in the interior. There's no flood in the in um, northern BC. They mm -hmm. need to relocate people, and they need like right away. Last year, I got approached by the province for disaster management because there were forest fires in Vancouver Island, and they need to house the uh, firefighters. Uh, so there's that. Um, being in a university town like Victoria and Nanaimo caters to the academic people and the student rentals. And that right. falls under the midterm or short-term rental space. Like, let it, for example, last September, I've been talking to UVic people and Vancouver Island University because they only have 400 dormitories and they're bringing in 1,600 students because of the pandemic. It all have like pent up, like it opened the immigration, not yes. only local, but also international students. So like, hey, Mark, can we tap into your network? Because we need to, have a space for for your students um what else can we have if you are in the military area like comox the military can, people can be your your guest you know um let's hmm. see um and, and corporate rental so uh last oh no this year so they're building a marriott in town um hmm. and then since the hotels are full they asked me like hey can we scoop up nine of your airbnbs and we'll rent it for nine months. So there's that too, you know, and they're good. They're good clients because they are dealing with corporate. Um, part of it is for me is my project is having that database uh, yeah. of corporate people. But then this is where you're marketing, you know, in if you just rely on Airbnb, then people come to you. But if you want to target the particular guest avatar, then you have to chase them. Um, and that for me, I think, is my goal is to be the preferred accommodation provider for the hospital because I dealt I dealt with them. And I also am a social media guy. So being a travel nurse myself, I created the Facebook group for Canadian travel nurse and mm -hmm. uh, it grew up from 10 members to 8,000. So I run the wow. biggest Canadian travel nurse Facebook group. And I want to be that, you know, as a travel nurse, I know what we're looking for and, uh, and a real estate investor. That for me is the goal. I think for next year is to be that preferred um, accommodation provider for the medical community. So, Amazing. yeah. Amazing. I, I think that's great. Like, I hope you guys all just heard that because we we all kind of pertain short-term rentals to the touristy side of things, you know, the traveling side of things, right? So I think the important, you know, here, here Mark's actually giving everybody some advice. So sometimes if your area is not so touristy, I guess you would call it, that the corporate side of things, and I think Mark, you've just alluded to this, can even be better in some cases, right? Where there may be more of a midterm type of a rental. And so I hope you guys all kind of heard that because that's, that resonated really, really well with me is that in some cases, it's not just about having the sunniest place uh, around, but there are opportunities. In, and I would, I, would, I would think that's correct, Mark, is in almost any market. Am I correct in saying that? You made a good point, Mark, because there's that connotation that Oh, short-term rental, it's all vacation. But no, mm -hmm. there's other guest avatars out there. Um, yes. And you cater to them. And I think what makes Beautiful. me in a good position is this is a vacation destination. This is a university town. Um, this is also a gateway to like military area. And we Very have, good. yeah, the hospital. Oh, I forgot too, the film. So now that it's getting back to normal, mm -hmm. we have lots of people like, you know, hey, can we rent your place for four to six months because we're doing film in the, you know. So if you are in an area with the film, then that too. At the same time, I will share my, the events. So one of my buddy that's doing arbitrage um, is will rent in Calgary Stampede. So if you know that there would be events coming up, so mm -hmm. being two months in advance, rent a place and then um, 
uh, furnish it and then offer it to when there's an event coming, then that makes you, it, you know, it, another business model if you want to go that path. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, there's a question that came up from Kevin, and I'm going to ask this because that was one of my questions that I had here is, you know, we've highlighted location. You've talked about, you know, corporate rentals um, and even just in the vacation side of things. Um, but my question to you is, you know, what type of properties do best in sweet mix? And then here's a question that's actually come up from Kevin. And uh, I just got to zoom into this as well. Is I have a three bedroom apartment and I'm thinking uh, to convert to an Airbnb. OK, so that's that's step one. I was considering having one bedroom as a home office with a desk and a computer. Is it worthwhile to maybe keep it as an office? So he's got it would be like a two bedroom plus office or maybe keep it as a three bedroom. And I guess this is more of a furnishing question. And what are you seeing there um, as best 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 use in regards to something of this size? Okay, I guess this is in, in, in our real estate space, that would be house hacking because you live in one, enjoy the primary residence benefit and then rent the other space. Um, if you're going to look at it on a tax perspective, that would be really tricky because you do like GST on the and then, you know, like that space of looking. And also, I think for me and my guests, they love the privacy. So some people, I think, because with a three bedroom, you attract the family. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, and I think privacy is a big thing. They want their own space. Um, I mean, if you were offer it, he's looking at, uh, Mark, what he's saying is, should he keep the bedrooms as three bedrooms? And, and I guess this is part of the furnishing side of it. So he's okay. looking at converting it as an Airbnb, but okay. should he make all three bedrooms as bedrooms or should he make, should it have it as two bedrooms and maybe an office? And, and okay. I'm not sure if that makes sense. So, or maybe there's an option to do, a combination of both and so maybe sure. what would you if he has three bedrooms would you want to keep them as three bedrooms for airbnb um would that be the most attractive to potential guests or two bedrooms in an office what would you what would you mm, suggest? the way i'll approach it well uh, generally more heads more beds oh more, mm. more yeah more beds more, more beds, beds more heads right yeah right. okay yeah. um <laughs> yeah but then for the guest avatar because if you want to reverse it like okay what kind of guest avatar am i yeah. Uh, you know, uh, targeting because uh, for family, of course, uh, you know, kids can, you know, then if you're in an area where it's family tends to go for vacation, then yes. Uh, for I find that for me, um, I go, I, I try like the digital nomads and working professionals. And in the Airbnb space, they give you a boost if you have a, a designated workstation with with the birth and pandemic being a catalyst of working from home. Um, people can bring their work anywhere and then they combine it with travel. So people right. are looking to play, uh, play uh, a place where, or uh, to place their laptop, looking at their, uh, how, how great your Wi-Fi is and having that, Hey, I am vacation, but also I can bring my work. So, right. um, that is an attraction that you can, and Airbnb will boost your space if you have designated work area. Love it. Love it. And I think that you nailed it right on the money. And I hope that answered your question, Kevin, is that, um, it is kind of really, as Mark said, your avatar. If you're doing something with more corporate rentals and you've got people um, coming in to work there and you have, you know, say it's a two bedroom and it's a one bedroom plus an office, I think there's some appeal to that. Uh, you get that extra space. But um, as Mark's also referenced too, is uh, more beds, more heads. And that's also more appealing for families specifically is when you're going away on holidays and stuff. So again, what is your property marketing to or who's your who's your designated tech, um client base in regards to who do you want to attract for your property. And then at the same time, um, you want to attract, you want to make your property reflect the needs of that. So great. Thanks, Kevin, for the question. Excellent question. So um, one of the questions you asked um, as well, oh, actually, Paul just highlighted on this one, Murphy bed. Okay. What's your thoughts on Murphy beds and in the office? <laughs> Ah, Murphy bed in the office. Actually, there's a space for that, you know, for, for like mm. the student rentals on a student budget, because they, yeah. you know, uh, it's absolutely a uh, great work use of space. It yeah. is very efficient. And in that time, like maybe I can see this like in New York where it's like a shoebox can rent for, you know, because they're all about location and you mm -hmm. don't have that space. And But this is a creative way of right. using that, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know in real estate, you don't have finance problem. You have creativity problem. There's a space for it. You can make it work. Um, yeah. And that can, I think, you know, from, I would say in year, that would be like 150 or 200 a day. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Um, 
lots of questions coming in, guys. Hang tight. It's good. You guys got to keep it coming. I'm loving it. So um, you've you've referenced a couple things, and um, every market is very very different. But I really want. It's very very important um, that everybody understands this because. Sometimes we look at this as it's all sunshines and roses and, you know, we bring people in and we charge 300 bucks a day and it's fantastic and it's just money coming in. But, you know, Mark, you highlighted this earlier is um, there's rules of engagement that we all need to be playing with. And, and some of the rules of engagement are with Airbnb directly, but even more so we're seeing an impact in government um, and government's impacting our long term renters right now. And the biggest issue specifically in some markets is inventory. Everybody is like, I don't want them to convert our short term or convert to short term rentals as it's pulling away from inventory. And so um, I, I guess the question that I want to ask you is, you know, what are some of those local laws investors maybe should be aware of? I'll start off with that part is, you know, what, you know, I know the island is probably more strict than maybe other regions. But um, I think regardless of whatever market you're in, um, just be aware of this. So maybe you can just share a little bit about some of the you know, government policies or government laws that people should be aware of before they even consider getting into the space. Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Yeah. In the short term, rental uh, licensing is big. So if you guys are considering that a quick Google of like, let's say, Kitchener short term rental bylaw, Google that, that will give you an um, what is the bylaw or what are the rules in that particular city before delving into like, is this a good market? If you pass that, then if you are into like single family homes or condo, then the bylaw of that particular strata or council or board, if it's in the in the Ontario region. So those two, like I said, I, I can't emphasize it enough. Licensing is a big thing. But also, what is the definition of short term rental? Because it some defines it less than 30 days, some defines it less than six months. So what is really that definition? Mm. Um, but you know, like Canmore is a different kind of market because they only allow short-term rental. 28 days in some areas of Canmore, 28 days, then you're out. You cannot stay longer. Mm. So it's, yeah. Uh, I, Interesting. I think parks in some part of Parksville, it's also because of the zoning. Um, so there's that. But then the moment that you go into midterm space, midterm rental, then those rules doesn't apply. And the, the, the residential tenancy is kind of like, okay, it's like the gray zone. At the moment, there's not much rules um, in the midterm rental space, um, which, you know, for now, it's a good medium where I go. Yeah. So can I ask you, so like you, you referenced licensing and short term rentals, there's specific rules, midterm rentals, there's specific rules. So when you are getting licensed, you're actually applying for one of those spaces, either short term or midterm licensing. Is that correct in saying that? Sure. Yeah. There's no licensing for the midterm rentals yet. Yes. Um. um but. Being that in mind that it can happen, be, be, being affordability in housing and inventory being very prominent topics or hot topics nowadays, right? right. Uh, at the moment, right. no, because they consider midterm rental as long term. Even in the CRA standard, you don't, um, yeah, long term rental, you don't charge, um, well, midterm rental, you can charge GST if you have add service. I just finished my accounting, I uh, called with my accountant, so I am still like, fresh <laughs> for that. Um, but yeah. Um, and then yeah. the licensing process for short-term rentals, what does that what does that entail? Just so okay. people can be understanding. Let's say that for theory. Tofino, uh, zoning, like your um, because it's like it deals with the density, how much you can uh, accommodate with your, and at the same time you have to pay annual fee. Um, parking is another, and like I said, it's mostly like in the cohabiting in the community how much it impacts. Uh, most of the community will only restrict the license, uh, which is very timely in Seashell in Sunshine Coast, they only issue 15 mm -hmm. um, licenses. So every municipality does their own uh, and they have that control over uh, the business operate because it's it's a business. Right. Um, yes. And also on the other side is when you do financing, when you have a licensed short-term rental, it gets you more to the game to, you know, because uh, unfortunately in the, it's as good as cash flow as it is, Canadians, lenders, are not as big proponent of a short-term rental because it's projected income. They love their leases. They love their guarantees, right? right. They recognize right. that it is a good business strategy, but it's too risky for them. And they're coming from the risk mitigation. 
I hope it will be coming in the U.S. It's a big thing. They're two or three years advanced. You know, there is a lender that specifically for short term. You know, it's called short. It's a thing. Short term rental financing. So it's like music to my ears. But here, the <laughs> moment you 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 mention short term rental, okay, hold oh no. It's like Tinder. You're automatically swipe left. That's you know? so funny. Very <laughs> funny. Very funny. Okay, so uh, very good stuff. And I think the key is, and I think you've alluded to this already, is. You know what? Know your rules. Number one, the licensing rules. Make sure you understand the policies, regulations within the government in itself. Um, but you also, also made a good point is make sure you look at your condo bylaws as well in regards to the approval side of things. But I think what you've also referenced is understand the definition of what a term is, what a short term rental term is. You know, I've just got, you know, Paul referenced here. He's in Quebec. It's like 30 is less than 30 days. So, you know, here and you were saying, I think it was in the Nanaimo, uh, Mark was 28 days. Is that correct? You were saying, right? So it, there are variations. Don't just assume that um, just because Mark's referenced 28 days, that that's actually what it is. You do need to do some 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 work in, in, in determining what the policies and what the rules of engagement are when you're going through there. Right. So should, should we talk yeah. about disclaimer? OK, this is for information person. Information <laughs> <laughs> so um here comes to some here's my biggest this is my biggest issue okay mark so this is this is the mike ponty problem with this and i must admit i am brutal at this i do not have the eye when it comes to decor okay so this is me i need as much help as i possibly can because if it was me trying to furnish my short-term rental no one's going to rent it not one person because i am not good at that stuff at all so I want to, and I'm not sure if I'm the only one. If I want to know, hopefully I'm not the only one. You guys tell me that you're, I'm, I'm not alone here, please. But, you know, Mark, for yourself, I know you have the eye. So I, I'm interested in hearing more about, you know, what types of furnishing should you include in your unit? And, you know, what is the best strategy when it comes to the furnishing side? Um, and, and, you know, here's actually a question here from Five Vaughn. Um, you know, how do you furnish your properties? Do you buy used furnishings or new? Do you supply items in the kitchen? Example, salt, pepper, oil, tea, coffee, et cetera. So maybe I'll leave this question up. But at the end of the day, maybe let's talk about the furnishing aspect of things okay. and and, uh, and see. And, and like I said, this is a real big one for me as an issue. Right. So I'd love sure. to hear from you. So I would say two things. Well, for one, uh, like I said, you're in a hospitality business. So treat it like a hotel is a little bit higher, you know, so standard um, with a kitchen. Because, you know, and that's another thing. Um, if you're longer stay, they don't want to stay in a kitchen, a little kitchen in a hotel. So they'd rather stay in an Airbnb. So you put like um, basic furnishing, kitchens, um, kitchen items, cutleries, things like that. Um, so so those are basic. TV, all utilities included, internet, really fast. You know, fast internet is a thing. Um and then on the other side is when you have your guest avatar. Okay, let's mm -hmm. say you're going on a vacation rental. You're catering to the family. So they're more likely to cook. So you get more of like the salt, pepper, oil, tea, coffee. But, right. you know, and also in a corporate rentals, you do that, but not as much. Um, let's say a bottle of wine, cheese, or something mm. like that. Would you give that to a family? No, you don't want it, right? But then for the corporate rental, Doctors, that's healthcare juice, okay? So if you guys are catering, <laughs> yes, we need, they just want like a bottle of wine and Netflix. They are going to go chill, Love you it. know, Netflix and chill. Um, mm. So yeah, it was to like your target avatar. Your students, you know, um, definitely more study space, more lighting. Um, they like more of the sockets. Um, the more smart your home is, uh, the, the better. Uh, and more like working space. Yeah, let's say uh, for vacation, you can add more. Uh, we here on the island, we have like cottage and farm. So we have um, get uh, we have hosts that are saying they do like their uh, goat cheese. They cook breakfast for the guests. Um, there's the soap or pottery. If you're in a pottery, you give like mini tokens for the guests. So so you can cr craft it the way, or you can inculcate your your personal touch to it right. based on your guest avatar, of course. So yeah. So know your guest avatar and tailor it to that, the furnishing. Yeah. And I think that's the key is, you know, maybe even, even go in, pretend you're actually your avatar, your guest. And what is it specifically you are looking for when you are decorating your space? Would you agree with that? Something like that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and let me ask you a question. Like now the other part, you know, there was a question that uh, five on, are you, you purchasing used furniture? Are you buying brand new? Are you doing it like a, 
kind of like brick where you're doing it as a, a rent to own or, and then what are kind of like the average costs for, you know, what are, what are we budgeting for something like this? Even, even rough, just to get a perspective for people. So. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go back to like the guest avatar because for me, uh, for my experience, I cater to doctors and nurses. These are uh, premium guests. So most of all of my, my uh, are brand new. Um, so for one bedroom, I put like 10,000 and then for two bedroom, 15,000, that's my budget. Right. Um, but you don't have, it's, there's no rules. You can craft it the way you want it. There are some that are good in marketplace, secondhand, um, dollar store. And in the States, it's a thing. There are, there are like big warehouse that collects all those marketplace and they will, you can use them and furnish it for you. You can lease it even like, mm. Hey, I have an Airbnb. Um, can I use your space? And then they will like craft it the way, you know, they'll come to the place in one day, boom, it's all set up. Love it. They're more advanced here. Yes. You have to do it yourself or you can hire someone. Um, definitely a great model. I can say it's re really very cost effective because, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, um, uh, wear and tear, you know, and they will take it away and they're happy to take it once you're like, okay, I'm done. Or I want to replace it myself. Um, the beauty of, for me that I advance for um, brand new is A, because like I said, it's all like reviews. So if you have OCD people and like really like a Karen, <laughs> sorry, for, yeah. but like, you know, like really high standard, then you're, they will it will reflect on your guests. So you want to like really, since you're offering that, you can offer premium price because, you know, mm. it, you're offering a premium service. So that part. Um, but yeah. It, in a nutshell, it's all to your creativity. If you have really a knack for it and time, so go scour the marketplace. I know some of my friends love it. They will sit down and just shop. This is good. Amazon, it's there. Perfect. They will, you know, they will deliver and just unboxing. And, wow. and you can make it. And also theme. Theme Airbnb is the thing. If mm -hmm. you want it like a vintage Italian, Mediterranean, things like that, you know, you can do that. Or me, I love anime. You can theme it like a Pokemon <laughs> theme and people will like that, especially younger generation. I have one that is pineapple themed. They're like, okay, pineapple, <laughs> curtain, pineapple, throw pillow. It, it, it's, you know, the you, you can, it's Wild West. You can do it you, the way you want it. That's what I'm love saying. It. Love it, love it. So hopefully that helps guys. Like I think at the end of the day, you know, you can go multiple different ways in this thing and it's just really based on your preference. And the one thing I really liked is, that I heard is I can hire somebody to do that. So that that's very good for me. That doesn't have the eye and I need to keep the units full. And so uh, that, that was a big one that I, that I heard. So hopefully that will help. Um, now, one of the other things that we kind of talked about is the importance of marketing, because this is important, right? Marketing is probably one of the most important keys uh, to this business because it requires lots of it. And uh, especially if you're doing more of the short term vacation type of, strategies. So um, maybe I can ask you, you know, what, what are some marketing strategies that you have in your business today? And what tips can you provide to get kind of maybe the best reviews? You've highlighted this is that you want to get those five star reviews. So maybe you can kind of share this like you are a super host, right? Correct? You are a super host. So super host, maybe even just highlight what does that even mean? So there's like kind of two or three questions there, but it's really referencing on the marketing side uh, to the business. So Okay, uh, I guess let's start with what is the common between the long-term rental marketing and the short-term. You still can yeah. advertise in Kijiji. You can still advertise in Craigslist. You can still advertise in the marketplace. You know, that's common between two or any other posting where it's like, okay, I'm just monthly or, you know, short-term rental. Um, and then there's the birth of OTAs. We call it industry online travel agency like Airbnb, Verbo, Expedia, Booking.com, you name it. Uh, these are OTAs. And you know that makes 80% of your marketing away because A, for one, they are the leader in the industry. So you just put your pictures there, create your listing, create your profile, and they will do the marketing for you. Great, hmm. right? And even collecting payment, which is good. So they make it easier for you, A, for one, and it's free. So yeah, if you if you just want it like I'm lazy, don't have time marketing, put it there, great. And you know what? I think for the most part, 80%, like here in the island, 80% um, are under Airbnb. So they're really the leader industry to the point that it's like the Kleenex. When you say Airbnb short-term rental, it's Kleenex, that's it. You know, the, it's brand. Right, um, right. Right. So, and then, so Airbnb 
it, uh, super host is actually an Airbnb term. I don't know it's the counterpart for Verbo or Expedia, but what super host is every three months, as I've mentioned, it's all about reviews and algorithm and SEOs. So you get rewarded, you get incentivized. If you are doing good, your listing are getting great reviews, people enjoying their, their stay, then you get a boost. Your pictures are great. People click it. It's all, they, they, they monitor it. Big Brother is watching. You know, right. the analysis, oh, lots of clicks on this property, you get a boost. Um, your pricing, your pricing is very competitive. People tend to book more. Your calendars are booked. You get a boost. So things like that. And then you are a super host. That means you have consistent 10, uh, uh, five-star reviews for 10 stays. Uh, cancellation, you have 0.1% cancellation. And you are a very active host, which means you respond to the guests for less than an hour. So that means mm -hmm. you have to be on the phone, you know, um, or you, you any concern, you are very active. You, you tweak your, your listings, you get a boost. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that is the super host. And every three months they get you, uh, they review your performance and, and it gives that when you are booking for like, it gives that extra layer of trust for people because right. you know in the hotel if you know that you're booking in a marriott or sheraton you have that peace of mind that okay i'm booking like there's a certain standard but with the short-term rental there's not but having that short um super host and you maintain that badge gives that um extra layer like okay i can trust that this is going to be a good experience right yeah and i think that's key is you're highlighting that that super host classification really just ump ups your your uh your clients confidence in in in, do, in being part of this with you um and i think you know you just highlighted this is you know th this is a little bit more of an active business um and I, I got two other questions that kind of maybe pertaining to this is it is more active and you just you just reference that is you know you sometimes you do have to be responsive and respond within an hour to kind of like an issue that may be popping up and so with that being said um you got to be active and so you got to also understand that's part of your business. And so my question actually, Mark, is um, it's important to do. This is an important piece. And if you are hiring a property manager, is that an expectation? And is that a service that is very common in the property management space for short-term rentals? Yes. Uh, yeah. Guest communication, probably 30, 40% of the property manager's job. But that yeah. It's in, it's it's 24 hours because sometimes you have international guests and sometimes, right. hey, the remote's not working at two in the morning. Mm. You don't get that in long term rent. Yes. Um, so, yes. So the industry standard, it it's a little hefty, 25 to 30 percent of the cash flow or the revenue. Uh, but because they do it a lot. But, yeah. you know, as I said, it's it's a creativity issue. There is the birth in the industry. It's very, very techy. There yeah. is the birth of virtual assistants and AI. Um, you know, when you go for, let's say, bigger company and they said, thank you, we received your response. We will respond to you in 24 hours. That is considered a response. So yeah. there's that service. So it's still that boosts your algorithm. So I guess going back and just to finish in the marketing. So if you have, if you put your short term rental in the OTAs, then that's pool marketing. You don't have, they will take that away for you. But that be, that's pool marketing. You attract them, but you definitely, you can do also push marketing, which is good in the corporate rental side of things. Or if you have a target avatar, great. Right. I want to target student rentals. Great. I'll connect with Vancouver Island University. I'll connect with University of Victoria. So that's push marketing. You can also advertise here on the island. You can advertise in the newspaper. You know, if you target a certain demographics, that's like, okay, you know, the retirees or the travel, you know, um, yeah. you can also... If you're targeting the hospital, subscribe to my page in the Canadian Travel Nurse, and you know we could you could create a database of um, medical corporate rental. Love it. So push or pull marketing. Very good, very good. Lots of good insight there as well, for sure. I I, I think there is a lot of advice uh, for people to take into consideration, and I think the other one that people should be aware of, and I hope you guys heard it from more of a longer term rental, we're paying you know eight, ten, twelve percent. Um, property management fee in short-term rental because of what Mark just alluded to, much more involvement. It does take a very larger percentage of your cash flow. And that's what 25 to 30% somewhere there, Mark, for management sides. But again, it avoids a lot of the headache uh, that you need to kind of deal with, right? So 
Um, so kind of coming, to, you know, as we're kind of getting coming to a close to our webinar, but there's a couple more questions I got and, and I saw some questions that reference this too. Um, you know, how do you ensure your project is profitable? And, and one of the questions that I can't pull up, unfortunately, is, is this, is that, that, you know, how do you deal with kind of maybe off season strategies, you know, uh, to, to maximize maybe your rental, rental income side of things. So, you know, we have variations. So, you know, for example, um, here we live in Vancouver, it's, um, and Whistler, it's not open yet. Like, and again, I'm using this as an example. So what's happening in Whistler? Yeah, it might be snowing, the ski hills aren't open. And in some cases, this is kind of that shoulder season where it's just miserable, miserable rain. How do you manage through some of that stuff to keep your business profitable? What tips of advice would you, would you give to people to, to keep maintaining that income stream for the property? So perfect. Yeah, so one of the key words in this short-term rental, mid-term rental space is seasonality, um, especially in the tourist location or the like peak season location like Worcester that you mentioned. Um, and that, you know, when we're doing our deal analysis, we have to factor in the seasonality to be conservative in your numbers. But, you know, uh, in, in it, one of the key factors I've seen is hybrid. So you can switch for like if it's popular, let's say for let's say Muskoka country or Kawartha Lakes in Ontario. So cottage area, spring, summer, it, you're crushing it. But then during the slow season, you can rent it as monthly rentals or long-term rentals. So you can do both. There's no rules of, you know, so oh, hybrid good. model is a good one. Yeah. Another way, well, for me, again, going back to the avatar, my, my, my avatar are the hostel. You know, we are 365 days, 24 hour business. Pandemic happened. We're still in operation. We have to show up for work. And not only the staff, we also have the uh, the clients. You know, a good example, um, during pandemic, the hospital kind of limits only one visitor policy. So people who would like to be nearby at the same time, like cancer, uh, chemo treatments, you know, you have to come to the hospital two to three times a week. So instead of staying at the hospital where it's like a box, like you want to have like a home where you can cook. So you need to be, you want to be nearby. Uh, one of my friends also a nurse, she did dialysis um, kind of like uh, geared. So that's her target avatar. So p pediatric dialysis and pediatric uh, chemo patients. So who guys that are familiar, you need to be near the hospital two to three times a week. So he, she kind of created like a Ronald McDonald Airbnb. I, I think, I don't know if she got funding from Ronald McDonald, but that's something I wouldn't <laughs> surprise. But creating that, you know, for the parents, so the kid won't be traumatized because, you know, hospitals shouldn't be like, you're not there for long stay. So, yeah. so, so for me, that's uh, creating that avatar. Um, I guess if you're a student rental, knowing about this, the, the university um, schedule is one that you're like, okay, yeah. I can prepare. And then from there, when the school closes or the demand is, then you can switch to another strategy. You can FIBA or, you know, change your hybrid. Love it. Love it. Great, great advice. So hopefully you guys kind of heard that. Again, you can do a mix, mix, mix strategy here. So again, this is some really good insight. Is it going to be short term? Is it going to be midterm? But you've got different options. And again, I, I think there's one clear message to um, to today's discussion is understanding who you are, who your tenant, who, who your prospect is, your client is, or as Mark's reference, your avatar, who's your ideal client. And then you are marketing, you are designing you are furnishing that property in that fashion and how do you go to those different places to attract those individuals so um last question for you mr mark and i always love to ask this um and again thanks for all this great information i hope our our guests that are watching live and through the recording as well are, are getting a lot of value but for those that are getting started or wanting to kind of go down the space you know what advice would you give them um what would, advice would you give investors that are actually considering this as an investment strategy um, in their real estate investing journey? journey? What would, would be their final words of wisdom from yourself? Enroll in Michael Ponte's class. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, talk to Michael. Um, I guess with any other, you know, with the beauty in a real estate investing, there's so many ways to make money. But if this is something that you want to niche, so find somebody that's doing it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And then like, hey, how can, because, you know, it, like um, when I'm, I approach Michael to give you the story, I want to explore multifamily. So I like, hey, Michael, I want to learn multifamily and you're, you're teaching this course, then I want to learn, you know, so I think I can, you know, I'm walking my talk. 
find somebody that's been doing it because it's already it's tried and tested. It's like a process you just have to replicate it. Um, and you know, most of people in the in the real estate world, they're happy to share. They're happy to walk you through. There's no Very competition. So. There's so many deals to be done, and yeah. they're you know they're happy to take it board. And sometimes doing deals together, that's the easiest way. It's who not how. That would be my take on it. Love it. Love it. Great advice. And again, connect, connect, talk to people that are that are successful in this industry. Um, you've definitely got some fans. I've got here from Jameson here. He's he's yes, yes, man. Yes, Mark, the Airbnb king of Vancouver Island. So uh, you've got some Thanks, fans buddy. that are joining us as well. So for those that are able to join, thank you so much. Uh, Mark, you know, if people want to know more about you or they want to reach out or connect, you know, what's what's the best place to kind of reach out to you? Do you have a website or something that people kind of can can, can, can can reach out to you or? Sure. Um, yes. So I am part of Unitum Holdings uh, that we form up this uh, this year uh, together with Jameson and Dina. Uh, Unitum mm -hmm. Holdings dot com. I am Michael, I think we uh, will give the the website or I can chat. It here. Yeah, I can actually put this in the description on the on the website or on the on the YouTube channel for those that want to uh, uh, check it out. And so I'll, I'll make sure that I have that in there. So and uh, feel free to add. I'm, I'm active in social media. I'm a millennial. So that's like our breakfast every day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Mark Hernandez. And just what Michael said, you can find me in Savvy Investor. I post like fun stuff there. I make it engaging. I, I like it. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, find me on Facebook. Give me a shout. Um, and I'm always happy to chat. I'm passionate about this. If you want to be also like a, uh, want to be part of the medical accommodation provider, we're are happy to have that conversation. Always, always happy. And if you have questions, I know one hour, I can't believe we're already past an hour. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, always happy to chat. Just reach out. Fantastic. You know what I'm going to do, guys, is um, I've already actually loaded up his website, but I'll also put a link on, on his Facebook group, um, also on the description of the YouTube video as well, for if you guys do want to check it out or you guys definitely want to subscribe. So, uh, Mark, I can't thank you enough. Great information. I hope you guys all found a lot of value in there. As you can see, we went through it quickly. We, I'm sure we could be here for another couple of hours. It's, 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 uh, it's been great to have you. So thank you again so much for, for, for partaking. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Great. So guys, as we kind of wrap things up again, if you haven't done so already, please do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, um, help us grow our savvy investor, uh, YouTube channel, as we want to keep you informed, of, of new update, new videos, as we have them kind of coming on. Um, so with that being said, we hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are watching the recording and you have questions or comments, please post them. We'll make sure that we get those answers to you. Um, as even though the video is coming to an end. Guys, have a wonderful evening and we look forward to seeing you at our next live training session soon. Take care.